today what we're going to talk about is kind of the, the concept that the Apostle Paul said in his second letter to the Corinthians. He said, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. And, and really what he was getting to is, is when we know Jesus, we're going to be transformed by his love and by his grace. And we're going to be completely different than we were before knowing Jesus. And for me, there's so many verses that, that you could talk about with this concept. But for me, none of those ring truer than just looking at the Sermon on the Mount. And, and how Jesus was all about the heart. You know, he said things like, you've heard it said, do not murder. Why well, say don't even be angry with your brother, right? And as you look at the Sermon on the Mount, particularly the Beatitudes that we're going to look at today, you see there's a description of how people who are part of God's kingdom will be compared to how people who are not part of God's kingdom will be. So if we're going to go ahead and look at, if you want to turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew 5, and we're going to take a look at probably about four of the Beatitudes today, but the vast majority of our time is going to be spent on the first, because I think in a lot of ways, it's the most important. And, and as we go through these, I want to really encourage you not to think about these as things to check, okay, a checklist of things to do. And in fact, that's what the Pharisees, that's how they viewed their religion was, let's do a bunch of things and try to earn favor with God. But what Jesus is talking about here is he's talking about, this is what people will be like who are part of my kingdom. This is about who we are, not what we do. And he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And, and I got I to gotta stop and just look. When I look at this first verse, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We've got to ask ourselves, to whom does the kingdom of heaven belong? And it's very obvious, right? It belongs to those who are poor in spirit. So I think what do we need to consider today is if we want to be part of the kingdom of heaven, we've got to be poor in spirit, right? That's what Jesus says. Belongs to those who are poor in spirit. Well, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? And the way I would define it is that being poor in spirit is having a realization that we have done absolutely nothing to deserve God's grace and God's love. It's an understanding that here's who we are, sinners who have, have fallen short of God's glory in relationship to God who is holy and blameless and perfect. And being poor in spirit is understanding the critical difference between who we are and who God is and understanding that truthfully we bring nothing to the table with our salvation. We can't do anything to earn God's favor. The reason that we're in Christ is because God made the way for us to be in Christ. And he called us to him. And, and this is radically different. Just like all the Beatitudes, this is radically different than the philosophy of the world. Like think about what the world says. And, and maybe one of you guys can, can complete this. The world teaches us at an early age, I can do anything I put my mind to. Think about the focus of that statement. I can do anything I put my mind to. See how that's very self-focused and thinking that we can, we can do things as long as we think about it? Well, look at me. I'm not a man of large stature. There's not a chance that I can put my mind to dunking a basketball, okay? No matter how bad I want to slam dunk, I can't put my mind to that, can I? So first off, it's not even true most of the time. It's a nice way to encourage kids to be confident and to work hard, but that's not the big deal. The big deal is when you start applying that to our relationship with God, and we start thinking, I can do anything I put my mind to. Isn't that the root of legalism? Isn't that the root of the mentality of people who try to make themselves right before God? We try to do stuff, and if we just give more, or if we just serve more, or if we just pray more, then we'll be right with God. And that's not true. Okay, what Paul says in Philippians 4 is he says, I can do anything. They start the same, don't they? I can do anything I put my mind to. 
Paul says, I can do anything through him who strengthens me. See, the difference is that the, the man who's poor in spirit says, my strength comes from Christ, not from myself. My salvation comes from Christ, not from myself. And I may be able to do great things in this world, but it has nothing to do with me and everything to do with Jesus. That's the critical difference between a man who's poor in spirit and a man who's not. Or let's take one that I really struggle with is self-reliance. You know, I, I'm a man who, who wants to take care of business and work hard, and I believe in hard work, and, and I think that if anything's an obstacle, I can take care of it. But the truth is, that's something I've learned from the world, isn't it? That's a philosophy where I'm trusting in myself. And, you know, the Bible is very clear. We ought to be reliant on God, not on ourselves. And, and that, that also leads to a heart of legalism in a heart where we're not necessarily trusting just in the grace of Christ, but we're trusting in our own ability. And that's a real danger for us. And, and at the outset, I think all of us would say, yeah, you know, I agree with that. I agree that it's, it's all Jesus who brought my salvation. But I think as we go deeper into this this morning, I think we're going to see that a lot of times we're not as poor in spirit as we might think we are. So the question is this, how do we become poor in spirit? Well, I think first and foremost is we need to understand we can't do anything to become poor in spirit, right? Being poor in spirit is a condition of our heart. So it's only something that Jesus can produce in us, right? But I think as we spend time in relationship with Christ, as we spend time in his word, as we spend time in prayer, he changes us. He changes the way we look at life. He changes the condition of our heart. Okay, It's like Paul said in Romans 12 too. He said, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And look at the verb tense. It says, be transformed. Does that say transform yourself? No, we can't transform ourselves, right? It says, be transformed. Well, how are we transformed? We're transformed when Christ renews our mind and changes the way we look at things. And you, and you see the first sentence, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. The pattern of this world is like the things we just said. I can do anything I put my mind to. I need to just, I just need to take care of business. I'm self-reliant. You know, that's, that's thought patterns that the world has ingrained in us. So if we want to not be conformed to the pattern of the world, what do we got to do? Well, it's really simple. We got to stop bringing in as many of their messages, and we need to start bringing in more of Christ's message, Right? We need to be more in the word, more in Christ's presence. We can't change ourselves, only he can. So if we want our minds to be renewed and transformed, we've got to spend time with Christ, right? Think about how much time we spend watching television, reading the news, on Twitter, on our phones. We, we want the fastest everything, right? We're always looking at things, we're moving 100 miles an hour. How much time do we spend doing that compared to reading God's word and absorbing his truth. And, you know, I think that's one part of it. But as a teacher, I've got to tell you, I've seen something with my students that is always kind of comical. You know, a kid will get a C, D, or F on the test, and they'll be like, I don't know why I did bad. You know, I studied for, for three hours last night, and I still did bad on the test, Mr. Reed. What do you think my first question always is? Did you only study last night? Did you think you were going to learn it in one night? Because my recommendation is always, you need to study a little bit each night. What if you just studied what we learned today, tonight, and then you studied a little bit each night? Wouldn't you be transforming your mind and really learning the material over time, right? But when kids try to just cram it all in and study the night before, they have a hard time remembering. Our brains don't work that way, do they? We can't just slam large amounts of information in and remember everything. So my second question is this. Okay. Okay. I'm sure you did have your book out for three hours. Did you have the television on? Did you have your phone out? Were you, were you on Facebook at any point during that time? Well, yeah. Do you think your mind was really committed to that material, right? And I think we do the same thing. We like say, you know, well, I read the Bible every day, but we're distracted by things. Maybe we're not on our phones, right? But we're thinking about other things, and we're kind of rushing through it. 
and we're trying to get these real quick results, but we're not willing to put in the work of real study. And we're not, and, and we do things like that are that are really good. Like we spend thirty minutes a day doing read the Bible in a year, but isn't it hard to remember everything you read if you just read it one time? Like, what if we started really studying Scripture? And what if we took things like the Book of Ephesians and we read that exclusively for two months, and we didn't worry about checking off boxes on a list of things we have to read on our reading list? But what if we worried about really learning? And really drawing near to Jesus. And instead of reading five chapters a night, what if we read five verses? And we read those verses over and over. And we really meditated on them. You see the difference there? And and, and I think that's when you start to see that your mind is being transformed. Just because we read the Bible doesn't mean we're transforming our minds. We need to be meditating on it and thinking about it constantly. And committing scripture to memory. And is is that memory... Up here has all those scriptures. The Holy Spirit can use that and and encourage us with his word throughout the day. You can drive to work and be reading the scripture, can't you? And I know a lot of people tell me, like, Chard, I can't memorize. I've tried it. It's impossible. Yeah, you can. You can do it. No, no, you don't understand. I've tried it. I know you have. But have you tried it the right way? Have you done done things that are going to help you learn the best way? And how I do it, it's not maybe the best way for you. But I'll read the same three words over and over, like on the next verse. Let's go ahead and skip up there. As for you, as for you, as for you. And then I'll look up. As for you, as for you, as for you. Okay, I got that. As for you. Awesome. And then I I go, you were dead. As for you, you were dead. As for you, you were dead. As for you, you were dead. And then I look up. As for you, you were dead. And maybe that's all I get today. But do you agree that you could memorize six words in little, little increments? And if you add a little bit each time, you'll get there. And why is it important? What does that have to do with being poor in spirit? Like, let's look at this verse. This verse is all about being poor in spirit. And this is something that we've got to preach to ourselves every morning. And if we've got the scripture memorized, we can constantly preach God's word to our own wicked hearts. We can constantly remind ourselves of God's truth. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Think about what that means. We were dead. Spiritually, we're dead. That means if you're dead, you can't do anything. Right? I mean, a dead person can't do a thing. A dead person can't bring themselves to life. We were dead. And that's the point Paul's making. That spiritually, there was no life in us whatsoever. That's who we were. All of us. You know, Romans 3 says, all have sinned and fall short of God's glory. And if we're guilty of just one sin, we're guilty of breaking the entire law. That's all of us. That's the heart of being poor in spirit is realizing God saved us. We didn't save ourselves. We couldn't save ourselves. We were dead. 